the God of Miracles next. The program you are about to watch is part of a free series we are making available to you as a gift from Greg Fritz Ministries, entitled Spiritual Gifts. Visit gregfritz.org to download the MP3s and watch the streaming video for free by entering code FREE at checkout. Are you tired of hearing bad news? Tune into the good news of the gospel. Welcome to Good News with Greg Fritz. Hello, I'm Greg Fritz. Welcome to the Good News program. We are doing a series on spiritual gifts. And if you are just joining us, you can get this entire teaching by going to the website and going to the product page and get this bundle. And uh, it's called the Holy Spirit Bundle. It's all on USB. We've got it in audio and video. We've also included another series called the Ministry of the Holy Spirit. And that was 13 sessions on who the Holy Spirit is and what He does. And then we've included this audio series called The Gift of the Holy Spirit. It's four audio messages. It's also on this bundle. And if you order this uh, now, we will send you my free book uh, or this book free, The Gift of the Holy Spirit. This is my newest book and it's on the subject of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's a handbook on being filled with the Spirit. It'll tell you what this gift is, who it's for, and how to receive it. We answer a lot of questions that people have about speaking in tongues and the proper scriptural use of tongues. All of that is on a USB stick and you can get that if you call our helpline or you can go to the website and find that in our product section. If you don't do any of those things, at least go get the study notes. We have all nine gifts of the Spirit, three groups of three, and uh, they're all on this in this outline. We have the definition of each gift and examples of each gift in the Bible. And so that'll be a great help to you. We concluded our last session on the gift of faith. It's a power gift, the gift of faith. And what that is, we've saw, we showed examples of where it was exercised. It's a gift of uh, it, it's believing God for supernatural protection and supernatural provision that goes beyond ordinary faith. Now, all faith is supernatural, but the gift of faith goes beyond ordinary faith because it goes beyond the promises in God's Word. Uh, in, in the examples we gave were Elijah at the brook who believed God was going to provide bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening by ravens. Uh, he went to the widow's house and he believed that they would eat from that one cruise of, uh, of oil and that meal uh, throughout the rest of the famine and that happened. Uh, we showed how Daniel believed God in the lion's den and it was a gift of faith. And so uh, the gift of faith is a powerful gift and uh, it's, it's, uh, it's in operation in the world today and we should uh, covet and, and desire that gift. And let me give you, I told you I took my teaching from two different resources at least, but one of them is a book by Howard Carter called An Questions and Answers on Spiritual Gifts. And Howard Carter is really the modern day uh, teacher of spiritual gifts. He kind of uh, made this, this teaching real in the early 1900s uh, as after Azusa Street, you know, the Spirit-filled movement began to grow around the world and this teaching was very helpful in helping people to use spiritual gifts within scriptural guidelines. And, uh, and so uh, he defined the, these gifts and we use his definitions for each gift. But he said this about the gift of faith and I thought it was very uh, a good way to wrap up this part of the teaching. He said, By the gift of faith, the violence of fire has been subdued, the raging flames burning nothing but the bonds of those cast into the furnace. In mysterious ways, men have been supernaturally fed and sustained, living and laboring in some instances for 40 days without even food or water. Angels have stood guardian over the servants of God, protecting them from the machinations of men and from the ferocity of beasts. An inward calm betokens the possession of this gift so that a man condemned to die, that would be Peter, he was condemned to die and he went to sleep uh, the, the night before he was supposed to be executed. Remember the angel woke him up? <laughs> he was sleeping between two guards. Man, that is amazing. Here's Peter condemned to die 
The same people who killed Jesus were going to kill Peter. He's chained between two guards because I guess they thought if we chain him between two guards, not even God can rescue him. Well, that's wrong. And so uh, he was asleep, fast asleep. Uh, you know, most people, people today have trouble sleeping when the music's on and the temperature's just right and the bed's got the pillow top and everything's perfect and they still stay awake. Peter's chained between two soldiers and he's sleeping and so much so that when the angel showed up, he had to wake him up and said, hey, Peter, wake up. The chains fell off and uh, he walked out of the gate and that was a working of miracles. The gate opened of its own accord and he walked out. And uh, so that was the gift of faith at work, obviously, uh, so that a man condemned to die could sleep on the very eve of the decreed execution while others take their rest in raging storms which threaten to submerge their ships at sea. And so uh, what a great way to wrap up the, uh, the teaching on the gift of faith. And if you didn't get that again, you can get all of these teachings, and I would encourage you to do so. Uh, Paul said in 1 Corinthians 12, 1, I would not have you ignorant concerning spiritual gifts. He wants us to have an understanding of these gifts, and it's very important that we do uh, because we're going to see these things more and more as the days go on. This is one of the ways, the, these nine gifts, is one of the ways that God combats uh, the spirit of the age, the attack on morals, the, uh, the spirit of Antichrist that's trying to silence the church and uh, trying to marginalize the people of God. Uh, the moving of the spirit and the gifts is a supernatural encounter with God. And we showed you the, the uh, word of knowledge when Jesus met with the woman at the well. He gave her one word of knowledge. You don't have a husband. You spoke rightly. You've had five husbands and the man you live with is not your husband. That was a very simple word of knowledge. And she went and told everybody, come see a man that told me all I ever did. She was so impressed by that, by the fact that he loved her and he knew that about her, that God is a very personal God. And she was a great witness because of a very simple gift of the Spirit. We need to desire these things and covet these things in this day and time. You know what? We're going to talk about the working of miracles now, but next. But let me just say the age of miracles has not passed. And if you think it has, you are mistaken. God is still a God of miracles. The Bible says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. What He's done before, He will. I'm not going to say He can do it again. He will do it again. Jesus Himself said, The works that I do shall ye do also, and greater works than these shall ye do, because I go to my Father. And if you examine the ministry of Jesus, the three and a half years that He uh, fulfilled His ministry on earth, you can see the gifts of the Spirit at work in His life. He operated as a man anointed by the Holy Ghost. Acts 10, 38, Jesus Christ, He went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with Him. He was anointed by God. We today are anointed by God. Same God, same covenant, same spirit, same gifts. So these things are alive and well today. And uh, we're going to see them. You say, well, well, why haven't we seen more of them? Well, I can't answer that question. All I can say is get ready to see them in the days to come. Let's covet them. Let's desire them. And let's find out about them. Let's become familiar with and knowledgeable in this uh, this area of the Bible of the gifts of the Spirit. So we're talking about, we just finished the gift of faith. We are in, in the next group of three that we're using, and that would be the three power gifts. And the three power gifts would be the gift of faith, the working of miracles, and the gifts of healing. So let's talk about the working of miracles. The definition of the working of miracles is... A, a, demonst a supernatural demonstration of the power of God by which the laws of nature are altered, suspended, or controlled. Now that's a pretty good definition, isn't it? It's the, a demonstration of the power of God by which the laws of nature are suspended, altered, or controlled. In the working of miracles, is a, it's a supernatural sign wrought by the power of God. 
Now, I want to make this statement because Howard Carter makes this statement, and I think this is telling. But he says uh, that the working of miracles was more in evidence in the Old Testament than in the New Testament. And if you read the Old Testament, you see that. There was all kinds of miracles. I mean, demonstrations of God in very unusual ways. But if you go into the New Testament, what you see more of is gifts of healing. You see more healing. I mean, read the Gospels. There are miracles, and we'll look at some of those. But healing was, was prominent in the New Testament. And here is the reason. Um, the miracles were a sign of the presence of the power of Jehovah. And the prophet who wrought a miracle established his divine authority before the people by the miracles. Moses, remember, was given this uh, power to throw down his rod, and it became a, a serpent. And he used that miracle to prove his legitimacy not only to the Jews but also to Pharaoh and his and his court and and you know finally the they had power too and so Pharaoh's men his sorcerers learned how to make a rod turn into a serpent and you know what happened Moses serpent ate their serpent <laughs> Man, that, you know you just can't beat God you can't out miracle God you can't outpower God you can't outwit God you can't out maneuver God I'm so glad we're on his side aren't you we are on the right side so the question was asked to Howard Carter why should healings predominate over miracles in the New Testament and he said this and I love this he said healings predominate doubtless because the Lord has revealed himself in Christ as the God of love and love is always concerned with the sufferings of men and women Miracles are demonst demonstrate the power of God, and healings demonstrate His love and compassion. And that's exactly what we see in the Old Testament. We see the power of God demonstrated over and over again. But in the New Testament, in the Gospels especially, we see healings which demonstrate the love of God. Jesus was God in the flesh. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And He went about doing good the Bible says, and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. He was a healer. He was anointed by the Holy Spirit. He was doing, fulfilling the will of God, and, it just, and, the, and the result was just healings everywhere. I mean, if you look at a, you know, if you have a tornado go through a city and you look at the path of that tornado, there's just destruction. Things are broken and blown apart and and sometimes the earth is just taken down to dirt. Everything is gone in the path of a tornado. Jesus was God in the flesh, and He came to the earth. And if you look at the path He left, there was blessing and healing and restored lives everywhere He went. The gifts of healing were, were predominantly, the predominant gift. Certainly He walked on water, and he's, He multiplied loaves and fishes, and we know those are uh, miracles, but... But, but healings, uh, man, healings happened everywhere he went because God was showing, demonstrating his love and mercy toward humanity. All right, so uh, let's look at some examples of, of the um, working of miracles in the Bible. When Elijah challenged the prophets of Baal, and this is just absolutely one of my favorite Bible stories, and it's not just a story. You know these things really happened. Uh, Elijah declared a drought, and he challenged the prophets of Baal. Um, he said this. Let's, let's get to the... Uh, let's see where he actually challenged them. In 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 22, Then Elijah said to the people, I alone am left a prophet of the Lord, but Baal's prophets are 450 men. Therefore, let them give us two bulls. Let them choose one bull for themselves and cut it in pieces and lay it on the, lay it on the wood, but put no fire under it. And I'll prepare the other bull and lay it on the wood and put no fire under it. Then you call on the name of your gods, and I'll call on the name of the Lord. And the God who answers by fire, he is God. So all the people answered and said, it is well spoken. And you can see that in, in this setting, they needed a demonstration of the power of God, not just healing. They needed a miracle. They needed to see 
that God was almighty. And so that's the purpose of this. And so Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, uh, verse 25, Choose one bull for yourselves and prepare it first, for you are many, and call on the name of your God and put no fire under it. So the, he, he let them go first, and they cried out to their God all day long. They cut themselves. They chanted. They, they did everything they'd ever done, and their God did not answer by fire. And so then it's Elijah's turn, and he just upped the, the ante. You know, if you're going to have God answered by fire, you might as well pour water on it because <laughs> it's, not, it's not like it needs to be dry for God to burn it up. And that's exactly what he did. In verse 33, he put the wood in order. He cut the bull in pieces. He laid it on the wood and said, Fill four water pots with water and pour it on the burnt sacrifice and on the wood. And they did. And then he said, do it a second time. And they did it a second time. And he said, do it a third time. And they did it a third time. Now he's just showing off. And the water ran all around the altar and filled the trench with water. That's so funny. And, and you know, that's nothing for God. It's, it's just like, you know, Peter walking on the water. He thought that the wind and waves were going to keep him from walking on water as if when it's calm, it's a lot easier to walk on water. Uh, and the same is true here in reverse. It's like, you know, it's easier. Is it easier for God to answer by fire if the wood is dry? And, and, and that's, you know, this is a great lesson for us. So many times we get our eyes on things that don't matter. I know things are bad and I know that the world is becoming more and more anti-God and crazy and they've lost their sense of reality, right and wrong. I know that, but it really doesn't, at some point it doesn't matter. Go ahead and pour water on it. I mean, I've gotten to that point now that I watch the news and say, go ahead, pour another, pour another bucket of water on it. I don't care. My God is going to answer by fire. Our God can work in any situation. It doesn't matter how bad it gets. And I encourage you to, to don't hook your emotions up with the news of the day. Don't allow your mood to be affected by what they're doing in Washington or at the United Nations or in Europe. Don't allow these things to affect you. Our God is the God that answers by fire. And no matter how bad it gets, God can still answer by fire. And, and, and it's, I mean, these things are just, they're surface. They really don't make any difference. Unless your faith is in society and you're just hoping that things will calm down so we can get back to normal. And, and that may not happen, but if it, whether it does or not, our God is able to answer anything and everything that the enemy puts in front of us. At this point, it's just all uh, semantics. Go ahead, pour more water on. I don't care. This generation is so lost. They're so blind. A little more blindness isn't going to make any difference. I mean, they are to the point now where they don't know the difference between a man and a woman. I mean, that's pretty blind. I mean, anyone can tell the difference between a man and a woman. It takes a lot of satanic involvement to get to that point. But did you know God can answer by fire and change the situation in an instant? There's no such thing as being too lost to be saved or too blind to see again. Spiritually speaking, God can do the things that we see need to be done. He's not intimidated by the size or scope of modern problems. And uh, I just threw that in there, but I'll tell you, I'm encouraged by this. The working of miracles doesn't just work when things are good or good enough or at a certain level. It can be as bad as you can imagine and then times it by 10 and God can still answer by fire and change it completely. And so this is what he did. He filled it up till the trenches were full of water. Surely God can't answer now. <laughs> Maybe he'll have to wait till it dries out. No, not our God. Verse 36, And it came to pass at the time of the offering and the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel. I'm your servant, and I have done all these things at your word. And that's the key. You don't want to just go out and make something up and hope that God answers. This, he was doing this in conjunction with the Spirit of God. God was leading him every step of the way. And that's the key. 
you want to make sure if you're going to challenge the prophets of Baal, if you're going to go out on a limb, that God is leading you. And, and he certainly was. And he says, I've done all these things at your word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that you are the Lord God. And that's the key. We're not here to, to, to use spiritual gifts to build ourselves up or to make people think that we're somebody because we can flow with God. That's so immature. That's so out of place. And I, and I hope that's irrelevant in these days, in this time. We need reality. We need authenticity. We need real people of God with a real anointing, with real miracles. And the motive behind that is love. It's to help people. It's to deliver people. It's not to build up a ministry or build up a following. Uh, you know, followings have gotten so crazy lately. Everyone's, you know, everyone's so focused on their following and their influence on social media. And, and it's, it's just gotten completely out of hand. You know, some people are so focused on building a following, they've forgotten to get a message. So they get a bunch of following, they, they have nothing to say. They don't have anything to deliver. Uh, I'd rather do it just the opposite. I'd rather follow God, do the will of God, preach on the gifts of the Spirit. And you know, honestly, um, if you're watching today, I, I'm, I'm literally surprised. I'm so glad you're there. I love my audience. I care so much about you. I pray for you. But to teach on the gifts of the Spirit, you just wonder, is anybody going to watch this? Does anybody care? It's like everybody wants to know what's the next big thing, what's going to happen in the next election, who's going to win the Super Bowl, you know, what's your favorite color, uh, you know, all of the social media stuff. And I refuse to go there. I would rather talk about Elijah and fire coming down from heaven and have three people watch and be authentic and legitimate and scripture-based than to have the whole world watch me and have nothing to say. And so uh, hopefully you're like-minded. I believe it's time for people like us to stand together, believe God, and, and not be swayed by the, the latest fad or the latest social media fad or current or deception that comes down the pike. We need people that aren't tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine. That we're no longer children, but we grow up in the things of God. And we can be not only stable, but trustworthy uh, with these things. God's looking for some Elijahs that will be faithful and stand between the dead and the living and not give in to seduction, to, to, to greed, and, and, and not give in to money and the desire for things, but would stand strong and say, I'm going to speak the word of the Lord, whether you like it or not, whether it's popular or not. Man, the world desperately needs to hear from God unfiltered and uh, and so Elijah was one of those guys and so in verse 37 he said hear me O Lord that this people may know that you are the Lord God and that's the point of spiritual gifts it's to let the world know that he is God and that you have and and that you have turned their hearts back to you again and then you know the answer you don't even have to read I could write this now at this point. You could write it yourself. The fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and it licked up the water that was in the trench. Man, wouldn't you like to see that happen on our society today? Just let God just, just consume it all. And all that's left is people that are saved new converts that have been delivered from darkness and blindness and brokenness and sickness and disease and the torments of, of the devil. The, let God's fire fall in these days so that the only thing left is newborn Christians everywhere you look. That's what I want to see. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. Mission accomplished. It just took a little miracle. Well, a big miracle, and it, and it did the job. They had the reaction that uh, God wanted, that Elijah wanted. Isn't that powerful? Wow. Well, 
I'm going to continue this working of miracles. I, I am trying to get this done in a reasonable amount of time, but you know, at the same time, I don't want to rush it. Um, we're going to go through the working of miracles, then we're going to talk about gifts of healing, and then we go on to the inspirational gifts, and I'm not sure exactly how many sessions it's going to take, but when we're finished, this bundle is going to have it all. It's all going to be contained there, uh, as well as the series on the ministry of the Holy Spirit and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So you'll have all your Holy Spirit teaching there if you're interested. Um, but I'm going to go on. I, I appreciate so much those that have chosen to partner with us. I couldn't do it without you. Uh, we are not self-funded. We are not independently wealthy. The Lord has kept me from that. And He promised me that if I would develop spiritual things and that I would grow in the things of God, that, that when the time was right, He would get people that had money and finances and He would bring us together. And that together we would do something that we could never do separately. And that would give other people an investment, a part, uh, to play in what God's called me to do. And I believe that time has come. And if you're one of those people, please uh, call our ministry and partner with us. We make it easy for you. You can go to the website. There are ways to give automatically. Or you can send a check. Or we can charge your credit card every month. I just got a, an email today from one of our wonderful partners. And he said, I give $25 a month. I want to know, is there a way I can give $25 a week? The answer is yes. Yes, there is a way. We will figure it out. Hey, we sent men to the moon. You can give $25 a week. We'll find out how to do it. In fact, you can give $25 every day if you want to. You can give $25 every hour. We'll work it out. But we want to make it easy for you. If you'd like to be a partner, but you don't want to do the monthly commitment, you could give a gift uh, that would cover the year. 12 months, you can just multiply 25 or 50 or 100 by 12 and send that in and you'll get all the benefits of partnership. Uh, we couldn't do it without you. Uh, we've come all this way with our partner base and a wonderful team of people who, who care about us, that communicate with us, that give to us, and I just couldn't be happier. We pray for you. Uh, I prepare these messages for you. I think about you all the time. You're my audience. You're my family. And uh, I'm so glad you're there. And if you're not able to give, but you watch or you listen regularly, we welcome you. You're what it's all about. Uh, I don't need money and, except to produce this and get it to you. And so we're happy to do it. We're glad you're there. And you can certainly partake of many of the free offerings that we have, the free gifts that we have on our website, and we encourage you to do that. Well, we've run out of time. Thank you so much for being here today. Don't miss the rest of this teaching. I know it's going to be a blessing to you. And until next time, remember this, the good news is so good, the bad news doesn't matter. The Holy Spirit is our helper, strengthener, standby, and guide. In this series, you'll learn who the Holy Spirit is and what He does as we look at what the Bible says about the third person of the Trinity. Call our helpline at 918-749-7744 Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Central Time. Join us next time for Good News with Greg Fritz.